an active monsoon pattern in the western U.S., storms and a possible developing tropical depression in the southeastern U.S., and cool weather starting to appear in the northeast. Let's take a look at that surface map. I would say the dominant feature is this 1024 millibar high in the northeastern U.S. Late this morning, temperatures were in the low 70s and upper 60s. 63 up there in northern Vermont, and north winds helping to carry that cold air southward. You can also see the dew points in that region in the 40s and 50s. A stagnant frontal boundary from the Carolinas into Louisiana and South Texas. There's been quite a bit of rain in this area right here. And the Gulf is quite stormy. We're going to see that help to drop the pressures at the surface. And we're going to see this low pressure area come together and affect South Texas later this weekend. In the western U.S., an active monsoon pattern. Late this morning, we had thunderstorms in the Yuma area and at around St. George, Utah. And you can see there's a cold front lurking out to the west and an occlusion off the Washington coast. Then taking a quick look up there in Alaska, active Gulf of Alaska weather system. That's typically something that we see during the wintertime. And in northern Canada, this is quite an impressive system. 982 millibar low south of Resolute and this spider web of isobars helping to drive cold air into Nunavut from the western Canadian Arctic. And even a bit of snow showing up in Victoria and Melville Island. In the northeastern U.S., as we record this, 2 p.m. Eastern, you can see the cold air up there in Quebec, 61, 64. It does transition into warmer air around New York City, Rhode Island, and down into Maryland, where we have 80s. But that does mark the cold air that's flowing south. There it is, a classic cold air advection pattern. Closed cell stratocumulus up there in Quebec, transitioning into more of an open cell pattern in Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, but fair skies through that area. There's how some of that stratocumulus looks up there in Quebec, north of Quebec City and Saguenay. And there it is, broken overcast conditions. Burlington, Vermont, looking like this. And there you can see cumulus with a separate layer of stratocumulus up a little bit higher. And further southwest in New York at Raquette Lake, that gives way to fair weather cumulus. You can see it's kind of breezy. Can definitely make out a maple leaf there. On the precipitable water chart, you can really visualize that cold, dry air. There it is, extending across much of the Great Lakes into the northeastern U.S. And that will take a track south into Virginia and North Carolina over the weekend. And as we get into the start of next week, here comes a frontal system developing in the Midwest. You can see that spreading into the northeastern U.S., picking up some of that moisture. Lurking offshore, we get this coastal low developing. And that will help bring some dynamically produced isentropic lift type precipitation inland into New England around Wednesday. The southeastern U.S. at this hour, mostly 80s, but they've had some hot weather in North Carolina. Rowley, Durham, North Carolina, 16 consecutive days of 90 degree heat, which comes close to setting a record. They have had plenty of rain in that area. This is the satellite picture yesterday. Four and a half inches of rain recorded at Pensacola. And much the same pattern in place for today. Two and a quarter inch precipitable water in place along the central Gulf Coast. And that'll help that rain and thunderstorm activity get going once again. And there it is, that two to two and a quarter inch precipitable water along much of the Gulf Coast. But you can see the dry air spreading south from Canada and the northeastern U.S. By tomorrow, it looks like this. And it will take a toll, mostly in the mid and upper levels, and that will 
slowly shut down the precipitation. However, the presence of lots of dry air at those levels means an increased chance of severe weather, mostly in the form of high winds. As we go into Monday and Tuesday, rain chances continuing. There comes another boundary around Tuesday. Some dry, cool air spreading in also. But things not quite shut down in Florida, Alabama, and Mississippi. So quite a bit of precip expected over the next couple of weeks. In the south-central U.S., the heat has dialed back a little bit as that northeasterly flow moves into Texas, but already coming up to near 100 in San Antonio. The National Drought Monitor does show Texas, Oklahoma, and western Kansas is the focus for extreme to exceptional drought conditions. A little bit of good news in that regard, NHC going for a 10% chance of cyclone formation. However, this is showing up distinctly on the GFS precipitable water. You can see that the area is going to shift into the South Texas area. So going forward, tropical disturbance expected to form right there. Saturday and Sunday, you can see it coming together around Corpus Christi, two and a half inch precipitable water affecting much of South Texas, and that will continue moving inland. There it goes. But that'll focus mostly on Southwest Texas, probably not much relief for areas north of Interstate 20. And then later in the period, another push of cool, dry air comes into the state. And with that boundary set up there around midweek, probably chances of rain going up for central Texas into the eastern part of the state. In the north central U.S., the big story is the heat. Already at the sour, it's in the mid-90s in Montana. And Fort Collins this morning, 71 degrees was their low, and that sets a record for all of August for the highest minimum temperature. And we're expecting temperatures down there in Kansas, Nebraska, to be about 10 to 15 degrees above normal, looking for 100s over the next couple of days. There's the coverage of that heat for tomorrow. Quite hot there in northern Kansas, southern Nebraska. Similar story for Sunday. There it is. GFS does tend to be a little crazy with the highs. 110 degrees at Salina, that's not likely, but it will be hot on Sunday. And same thing again for Monday. The problems are due to the southwesterly downslope flow. But around Monday, Tuesday, Bear Clinic Boundary comes together in Nebraska. That's it right there. So a little frontal system. Coming together Monday, Tuesday, that'll bring some cold air into the backside in western Kansas, but there will be a rapid warm-up as that clears on off towards the southeast. There's a look at our southwest monsoon as we get the heating. We're focusing on this area here, all the way up into Idaho. And out there near Yuma, that's the remnants of earlier monsoon convection. The precipitable water chart does show that persistent monsoon, mostly in the lower deserts of Arizona, a lot of one and a half to two inch precipitable water amounts. And you can see around midweek, if you look in California around Monday or Tuesday, we got this low developing off the coast, and that'll help bring some of that moisture northwest. And there it goes, moisture surge. So we're going to start out around midweek with 100 to 110 degree readings in the northern San Joaquin Valley, but thunderstorms will start to appear and that could pose some potential for lightning-induced wildfires. But hopefully we get enough aerial coverage to where the rains will help with some of that. And in the northwestern U.S., we have thunderstorms north of Boise, up towards the Spokane area, and further north, you can see that these anvils are sheared to the northeast, so they do have potential for organization and some severe weather. Near record precipitable water at Boise, over an inch, remains in place. So we will see these diurnal thunderstorms, especially over central Idaho today. And with those elevated decapes today and tomorrow, that could bring a threat of severe weather, mostly in the form of wind. 
and this activity going into Saturday and Sunday will spread into western Montana as well. But around Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we will see ridging start to build back in. Those 850 millibar temperatures will be coming up to about 20 Celsius, which means 90s to 100s in the deserts once again. And there it is, the monsoon axis. The aqua colors over one inch precipitable water. You can see that ridge axis move a little bit east into Montana around Sunday, and then it backs off as we get some drying with that 850 millibar ridge starting to build in, and we return to those hot conditions once again. So putting it together with the 200 millibar chart, the weather mediated by the position of the subtropical high, which this morning was over eastern Colorado, and the ridges where they extend north. That's going to be fair weather, hot conditions. Also the troughs indicating the axis of the cooler air. So obviously that's that stuff that's over New York. And let's go forward into the weekend and see what happens. We'll skip forward to Sunday, and by that time, upper level high south of Arizona, the ridge moving into the high plains. It's shifted about like that over the two days between now and Sunday. The trough appears to be gradually moving to the east. Northwesterly flow over the Great Lakes, keeping things kind of cool in that area. Going into midweek, not a whole lot of change. Looks like the upper level high over New Mexico. There's that ridging building back in across the northwestern U.S. And as we get towards the end of the period, Friday, Saturday, 19th and 20th. Some northwesterly flow starting to set in in the central U.S., so that could bring a cool down to that part of the country. Indeterminate for the eastern U.S., strong jet stream over that area, and ridging, indicating hot weather continuing in the central Rockies. And at the end of the period, cutoff low over California, so more interesting weather for that part of the country, and continued long-wave troughing, on the East Coast. So in the large scale picture, not really much change. We are gonna see that hot weather focusing on the Western US. There it is again, subtropical high over Arizona at the very end of the run, the 20th, 25th of August. So continued hot out West and continued cool to mild out in the Eastern part of the country. And just a quick look out in the Pacific, there's that active pattern. The Gulf of Alaska low right there, precipitable water coming north, and that's contributing to the wet pattern across eastern Alaska. Then as we go forward, you're going to watch this area around Japan. Typhoon or tropical storm moving northeast across Kamchatka into the Bering Sea, so that'll continue to keep that area stormy precipitable water going south of those features, but there will be opportunities for some of that air to slingshot into southeastern Alaska or southern Alaska or western Canada. And here's the temperature anomaly for North America and the polar regions. So you can see that cool weather augmented by that Hudson Bay vortex pattern. So going forward into next week, cool in the eastern U.S., but it looks like another round of cold air coming south around the 20th or so. That's it moving into Canada, into the Great Lakes, and looks like towards the end of the period around the 25th, good chances for cold air in the Great Lakes and north central U.S. There is, of course, question whether that'll come very far south. It's tough for that air to come south in August, but this is, as you can see, quite a stout push of cold air, temperatures about 15 to 20 degrees below normal. Anyway, that is crystal ball territory, so we're not going to worry about that right now. But in the short term for today, these are the highs. Looks like Nebraska is the hot spot, 100 degree reading, but not breaking any records. For tomorrow, continued hot in Nebraska, 104 at McCook, but some cold weather starting to show up. New York, Binghamton, 48 degrees, tying the record for the date, and some equally cool conditions. Well, not 48, but mid-50s across Virginia and West Virginia. For Sunday, not looking at any records, but I would expect it to be 
continued cool in the eastern U.S. and continued hot in Kansas and Nebraska. On Monday, the heat settles into the Texas Panhandle, 100 at Borger, which is just northeast of Amarillo. For Tuesday, some hot weather starting to show up in the northwestern U.S. As that ridge settles in on that location, 105 at Ukiah, California. That's in the mountains right here. So I would expect fire conditions to really start picking up there. 97 at Klamath Falls, Oregon, and 96 at Missoula. For Wednesday, the heat builds into the interior deserts of the northwestern U.S., 90s and 102 there at Yakima. For Thursday, 103 indicated there at Yakima and Omak. And that's pretty significant because at the six-day point, we should be falling back on climatology for the highs. This is a definite departure from climatology, so that points to some definite heat wave potential later next week in the northwestern U.S., so we'll keep an eye on that. Anyway, hope that fills you in on some of those temperatures and the weather around the country. And as a reminder, the Perseids meteor shower, probably the second best one of the year. I've not really seen a good Perseids meteor shower, but I've definitely seen one of the Leonids, which is November. The Perseids, though, They do peak at about August 13th, which is tomorrow. It's kind of a flat curve, so it doesn't matter if you miss it tonight or tomorrow. You can go out Sunday and Monday and look for that. So 100 meteors per hour, that's going to be optimum viewing conditions. You're going to look towards the Perseids constellation. You know what? We got one of these old school planetarium things. These are pretty useful. Okay, there's Perseus, and there's August. So let's see. Around 9 p.m., it's going to be rising kind of like northeast, pretty far to the north, and it's going to move to the northeast part of the sky around 2 a.m., and then around sunset, 6 a.m., it will be pretty much directly overhead, so it'll be moving up from the northeast towards the overhead part of the sky around dawn. And we'll leave you with some footage of Castroville, Texas, taken by Greg. Enjoy that footage. That was just a couple days ago. We'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. And as a reminder, please help support the program. Your contributions, your Patreon support will help keep this program going for a while yet. Take care. Bye-bye.